Leaves are one of the best indicators we have for tree health. You may have noticed some things with your trees that you're concerned about, and you wanna know whether it's just the natural cycle of the tree or if it's something that you need to take action on. It's late summer going into early fall and the leaves at this point have gone through a full season of wear and tear. And we'll go over eight indicators of stress that you may notice in your leaves. Those indicators are progressive dieback, localized dieback, leaf drop, also known as defoliation, brown or scorched leaves, wilting or drooping leaves, deformed or misshapen leaves, discoloration, and spots, blotches, and blemishes. Even though leaves are a good indication of tree health, it gets really complicated because different stressors will manifest in leaves in similar ways. However, it's really important to pinpoint what is stressing your tree before you take actions like pesticides or chemical fertilizers because one, those may be a waste of money and two, can really impact the environment around the tree. It's also important to realize that in urban environments, when we notice stress in trees, it's usually compounding factors and it's not from just one single thing. Now, before we start looking at symptoms and start trying to find out specifically what's wrong with your tree, it's important to first accurately identify your tree and two, consider the site conditions. Let's get started with our first symptom of stress, which is dieback. Now dieback is when the branches die from the tips and the top and gradually progress towards the center of the tree. And it is one of the most serious signs of stress because it usually indicates a problem with the vascular system, which is a system the tree uses to get nutrients from the roots to the top of the tree. One of the main causes of dieback is poor root health. This can be caused by girdling roots, compacted soil, and other root conditions. Vascular diseases, which are fungal, bacterial, or viral diseases that affect the flow of nutrients of the tree, dieback can also be an indication of boring insects that are feeding on the cambium layer of the tree. A common symptom you'll oftentimes see alongside dieback is the production of water sprouts, oftentimes called suckers, along the roots, trunk, or main branches of the tree. These water sprouts are basically the tree's last ditch efforts to get nutrients back into the roots. Number two, we have localized dieback. Localized dieback is where one branch or part of the tree is declining and the rest of the tree seems unaffected. Localized dieback can be caused from tags, ropes, or chains that are wrapped around a branch and not removed, mechanical damage from things like planting, lightning, root damage, or exposure to an herbicide. Number three, we have leaf drop, aka defoliation. Leaf drop is when the tree loses its leaves prematurely. It can be fairly common, especially in newly planted trees that have experienced a big shock in the planting process. Some of the common causes are poor root health, heat and drought stress, insect or mite infestation, herbicide injury, mechanical injury, vascular pathogens, certain leaf diseases, and planting stress. Depending on the cause, trees can oftentimes recover from defoliation. It becomes a serious problem when the tree isn't able to put out new leaves or defoliation occurs consecutive times. If you're worried because your tree has lost its leaves early, it's a good idea to go around and take a look at other trees of the same species to see if it is a pattern that's occurring in your area or if your tree specifically is struggling. If your tree has lost its leaves and you're worried that it's dead, I recommend doing the twig test. If the tree is still alive, the twigs should be flexible with buds still intact. And when you break it, there should be some green to yellow underneath the bark. And this is an indication that the tree is still alive and will hopefully put out leaves next year. Dead twigs will be very brittle and will lack that green and will just be a brown color. I definitely recommend checking multiple twigs if one is dead because it could just be that branch and there might be life in the rest of the canopy. Number four, we have brown or scorched leaves. This is where the leaves either turn brown or a large percentage of the leaf surface turns brown. Some of the causes are excessive light reflected off of buildings or pavement, Inappropriate location, for example, a shade tolerant species planted in full sun, toxic chemicals in the soil, nutrient imbalance, salts, pesticide or mechanical injury, pollution, winter drying, fungal or bacterial vascular infection, 
or watering issues. Number five, we have wilting or drooping leaves. Some of the common causes are drought, toxic chemicals, poor root health, fungal cankers, and insect infestation. Number six, we have deformed or misshapen leaves. And we're gonna go ahead and just lump insect damage into this category as well. Some common causes are herbicide injury, late frost or freeze, insect or mite infestation, anthracnose, leaf galls, and other fungal and viral diseases. Galls may look concerning, but generally they don't significantly impact the health of the tree. Other insect activity affecting the leaves like chewing or skeletonization is usually a secondary symptom of stress that indicates a more serious problem elsewhere in the tree. Number seven, we have discoloration. Discoloration, which includes premature color change, can be a sign of nutrient deficiencies, poor root health, pollution, soil pH, herbicide injury, viruses, insects, or tree being planted in an area with the wrong light intensity. Chlorosis is really common in trees in urban areas and is an indication of nutrient deficiencies or nutrient inavailability. You can recognize chlorosis when your leaves are generally yellow with a darker mid vein. If you notice that your tree has chlorosis, it's important to get both the tree and the soil tested before you apply a fertilizer. This will allow you to pinpoint exactly what nutrient it's deficient in and also misapplying a fertilizer can make the problem even worse and again negatively impact that environment the tree's growing in. Some discoloration like sooty mold or powdery mildew is a result of fungi growing on the surface of the leaf. Typically it's not a huge problem unless it's covering the majority of the leaves and affecting the photosynthetic capabilities of that tree. Meaning that tree isn't getting enough sunlight through the film of mold to store the energy that it needs to survive and be healthy. Lastly, number eight, we have leaf spots, blotches, and blemishes. To me, especially late in the season, these are the least concerning. They're usually fungal or bacterial infections, sometimes insect damage, frost injury, and sun scald. Unless the majority of the leaves in the canopy are severely affected throughout the entire growing season, these usually don't have to be concerned. Before you apply any fertilizers or pesticides, be sure to send a sample in to a diagnostic lab in your area. If you just Google soil and plant testing, you should find options that you can send in a sample to. Generally speaking, when it comes to tree health, improving the site conditions is a practical thing that we can affect that will dramatically improve the health of the tree and it's resistant to pests. So here in the forest, we're not gonna have the same nutrient and health issues in our trees that we do in our yards. And that's because the organic matter, the dead leaves, twigs, dead trees, and even dead animals that accumulate on the forest floor provide a healthy ecosystem that cycles the nutrients back into the trees. If we're able to take that concept of the forest and apply it to our trees in our yard, we will have healthier trees and will save a lot of money. So thinking about your own yard, each year when you're mowing the lawn or collecting leaves, instead of sending those to the dump, spread them out around the base of your trees and let them decompose in place. That will provide essential nutrients to the tree and help a living ecosystem get established in your yard that will help your trees in the long run rather than just the quick fix of applying a fertilizer. Adding organic matter recycles the nutrients, protects the tree, and also improves the soil health. I hope this video was helpful and either put your mind at ease or helped you know what next steps you can take. If you have any specific questions, please let me know in the comments or reach out and please subscribe. Thanks.